Hello everybody, Psyche here. Today, just want to go over um, a couple of different liquid culture recipes. So, I need to make some liquid cultures. I've got some uh, very new exciting growths on agar that I would like to move into liquid cultures. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to go ahead and make a bunch of different ones and show you how I like to make those. So I guess I'll go in order of my favorite ways to make liquid cultures. My favorite would be to use um, light malt extract. Now what a liquid culture is, is pretty much just like a sugary solution that the spores or like mycelium can feed on and then grow. So it's just like another like grow media to keep your cultures nice and well. And then from there you can, um, since it will be in mycelium form, it will be much easier to inoculate uh, your grains and whatnot. It will start to colonize in about like two days and it will be fully, fully colonized in about seven days. So it's quite fast when you do liquid cultures and that's why it's faster to go from mycelium than to go from spores because the spores don't have to germinate. That process gonna, is going to be already done. So I'm going to go through how I do these and yeah. So we want a about a 4% sugar solution to our water. So I'm going to use mason jars for this and I'm going to fill them up to... Can you see? Yeah, you can see. Okay. I'm uh, going to fill them up to 600 um, milliliters of water. So I'm going to fill them up to here. I've got some water boiling uh, right now or just like heating up a little bit because it's going to make it easier for uh, the medias to disperse. So we're going to get uh, one gram of everything or about 24 milliliters per 600 milliliters of water. And sometimes I like to like double filter these which I'll just Add it on, pressure cook it once for like 10 minutes, and then filter it out through like a coffee paper. I'm not gonna do that today. Um, I don't think it's very necessary. And also we're gonna have the other ones to work with. So we'll see if it makes a difference. Um, so that would be my favorite, the light malt extract, just because, I don't know, I just feel like uh, the growth is very nice, very uniform when I use this. Now my second favorite, um, this is, <laughs> This is just close to my heart. This is, I'm completely biased about this because uh, I'm Canadian and I use maple syrup and this is actually maple syrup from my family. So I like to do that and I call it the Canadian tech. So awesome. And we're gonna do it with also some honey. And I don't have the right one, but usually um, we're gonna use some uh, light corn syrup, but I've got some, um, <laughs> Lily white corn syrup and it's got some like vanilla extract in it so I'm not entirely sure it's gonna work but we're gonna test it out for you today and last but not least what I like to do is grab a couple marbles and I will put those in the jars so when the cultures are like eating and everything and you got this like nice mycelium like network um, you can just shake up your jars and the, the marble will go ahead and like break it down without uh, just damaging your mycelium too much. So that's what you need for the ingredients. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh everything out. I'm gonna grab my water and we're gonna go over the pressure cooking method. So I'll catch you in a little bit. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear my scale. I'm gonna make two of the light malt extract. I'm gonna make two of the maple syrups one of the pure honey, one of the Cairo, and then I'm also just gonna boil some, I mean, pressure cook some water, sterilize it, and, cause I wanna make a stock, uh, a bunch of spore syringes. So, we'll do one water, and then six will be liquid cultures. Bang! Awesome. So, I'm gonna go ahead, tear my scale, and we're just gonna weigh out one gram of the light small texture. This will clump up, it's kind of annoying. the end of the world. Okay, so let's just touch over this one. And I'm gonna get these in these jars as soon as possible. Uh, 
that is the light malt extract. And then obviously I don't think you need to see me weighing all this out, so I'll do the fast forward thing. What's up guys, thank you for checking in. So for the maple syrup and the light malt extract, everything weighed out pretty easily. Uh, the maple syrup is liquid enough that I can pour it in the mason jar afterwards. But then with the honey and the Cairo syrup, it's a little thicker, so I kind of use just use my scale as a, a guide to uh, see how much one gram was and then just dumped it in the mason jar. I also did the same thing with the Cairo syrup. And it's okay, it doesn't need to be perfect. <laughs> We're just aiming for roughly 4%. Okay, we are back. Boom. So we're just gonna fill this up with 600 mils of water. And I've got just a little tool just to do, 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 hop it out. Yeah. Probably not the best way to do it. Like, or if you would want to do this using one method, what I would recommend is actually heating up your water and then making your stock batch in like your pot or something. And then fill up all your, your, your jars to 600 mil and put that in pressure cooker. Uh, just because I'm doing like three different or four different variations today, I'm just gonna do it one jar by one jar. But obviously if you're making like six or seven, it's all the same in uniform, mix everything in your water and then fill up your jars. So let's get to it. Actually, when I want to put the marble in, because it doesn't, the water helps with like dispersing everything through. Can you even see them? Yes. Yeah, Try different different camera angles. Hopefully, uh, to get a nicer view. But yeah, the rumble's nice, it's gonna break up like all the clumps and all, all the good stuff later on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with the rest. Catch you in a second. Okay, so I'm going to fill up the jars. And looking back at this, I should have um, flipped the lids already because we're gonna the way we're gonna fill up our pressure cooker is we're gonna put our lids upside down. That's gonna allow uh, a little bit of like that air exchange with our jars don't blow up. And you can see me go back here. I forgot to do it on the first one with the light malt extract. And very important as well, we're gonna wipe the lips with uh, some rubbing alcohol as well, as that's the only like area that you're that could potentially harbor bacteria. So wiping all the lids and then I'm just placing everything in front so I don't get confused as to which uh, liquid culture is which before I label them. And last one is just going to be water. Like I said, I want to make a stock uh, solution for spores. So I'm just going to get water. And same protocol with the lid. We're still going to wipe it down, upside down. And there you go. So I'm just going to label them really quickly just so I don't like mess up uh, when they come out. I think I'm not going to do the foil on top. Um, I mean, maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. I'll bring them up. I'll bring them up to the stove and I'll see what I'll do. But I'm just going to write Cairo. Take this away. And I'll go. Light 
Now we're gonna pressure cook these um, at 15 PSI for 20 minutes. Um, sometimes if you let it go a little longer, some of the sugars might burn. And this is also kind of like why we're testing out different methods. Some sugars burn, but, and it kind of affects like the mycelial growth afterwards. But uh, if you, once your pressure cooker reaches 15 PSI, you're good to start your timer for 20 minutes. I, I leave mine for like 20, 25, and that's usually pretty good. Then you wanna turn your heat off and let everything cool and we'll be ready to inoculate so i think the inoculation is going to be a different video just because i got some really cool uh stuff that i'm really excited about but thank you for watching um i don't know if this is the end of the video i'm just going to go ahead and like load up the pressure cooker and we'll see what happens okay so i've decided i will wrap these with foil and give these a quick stir and we went ahead and did the lids thing, uh, just upside down. I'm going to inoculate these with uh, pieces of agar. So I don't find it necessary to use a like inoculation port. So I'm cool with that. Alright. So we go uh, shiny set up. And you want to make sure when you close the lids they're not like all the way tight. Just leave a, leave a little bit. They don't explode. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> I don't want to put foils on my lids anymore. I don't know why I'm doing this right now. I just, uh, just want to show. You can do it. Sometimes I guess I've had issues in the past where like water or like steam will come back in, and then there's like this slight possibility it like slides in under like here, but. Um, that's a little, it's all right. But just to triple check ourselves, we're gonna do it like this. And my pressure cooker is going to fit uh, seven. Seven cultures flat, usually it fits nine because I can tip them on the side, but unfortunately liquid, I don't really want it to like spill everywhere. So we're gonna fit seven. Yeah. Okay, I guess I'll do my uh, outro in this little section here. Thank you for watching. If you have any question, concern, comments, definitely leave them below. The section below should also have a description of like all the material you need and the exact like uh, weights and whatnot. So you don't have to watch everything. You can kind of just go down and check it out. I've got some awesome projects coming up, especially from the month of March that I'm very excited about. So lots of uh, really cool stuff leading up to it. So again, hope you guys enjoyed and let's finish this liquid culture video. Okay. I'm gonna fill this about this much down the jar. too much but So I'll let this steam for a little bit and then put my cap back on once it reaches 15 PSI and we start our timer for 20 minutes. And once that 20 minutes is up, we'll turn off our stove and let it cool. But yeah, that's essentially it. Catch you guys in the next one. Psyche.